say, I can't be healed. That's a part of the end. Fear. Fear is not the children's brain. That's not ours. Fear don't belong to me. Have I arrived? I'm still on the journey. But even as Pastor Leslie asked me, okay, okay, because I could have used it just said, mm-mm, <laughs> because you better believe it. the enemy was still showing up yeah. morning and evening right. yeah. just for me yeah. Yeah. to come before you all a minute, a second, whatever. Yeah, come on now. He shows up. Yeah. He gonna show up when you least expect him to. Ah, yeah. <laughs> but you got to be ready. You got to be ready. Because just like in the um, first part of Job, the book of Job, as God was talking, the enemy showed up. Yeah. Right there in the midst. Yeah. Right, Apostle? Yeah. 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 He's waiting to stop us from doing what needs to be done in the kingdom of God. All right. Ah, Jesus. Wow. He's ready to destroy uh, us, to the uh, tour of to keep us from coming forth. Oh my God. Yes, sir. Move you out of your place. Come on, yeah. We are supposed to be in the right place. Come on, Jesus. 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 I've been fighting. Yes, God. Yes, I've been fighting to come through the doors. Yes, God. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm talking about that. Yes, but I'm here to help you. Because that's what it is. It's all about exportation. Exportation. All right. Say it again. Up on the pop. Okay. Tell me that. says right. Hey, look that up. That's what it's all about. Encouragement. To give us a boost. Yeah, yeah. Because somebody else is not just me in this place, right? Just like he reminded me, he's reminding you. Yes, God. Don't let the enemy keep showing up and you don't show up. All right. Ah, Jesus. All right. My God, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah. One day at a time. One day at a time. If we seek him, things will make a change. Yes, God. Seeking the kingdom of God. That's what it's all about. That's right. Fellowship with him. Ah, yes, God. When we learn how to fellowship with him on one accord, that's when our breakthroughs come. Yeah. And when it even feels like it's dark at night, morning is coming. Eventually, it's coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like the Philistine, Goliath kept showing up morning and day. Yeah. Morning and day, he showed up on the battlefield to put the fear in them. Yes, God. Yes, God. And even when God sent David, mm. still yeah. he talked. His own kin folk yeah. was trying to talk him out of what he had to do. Uh, Your kin folks were doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just say to each and every one of you all, recognize Ah. The enemy. Yeah. Recognize. Yeah. When you recognize the enemy, you got an upper hand. 
without a man. As I get ready to go uh, to my seat, the Lord gave me, it's been about 12 years, about six or seven, about six or seven years, when I first got, got my last car. And I got the, uh, the uh, book where you pay your pages out of. Who's actually going to do that? But anyway, he gave me two quotes. The first quote was, Fear belongs to the devil. Faith belongs to God. Amen. Then the second quote was, if you make much of the blood, the blood sure will make much of you. Shalom to God's people. Amen. 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 Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate. Amen. 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 The presence of God. Amen. Can we help celebrate? Amen. What God is doing. Amen. It's right here in this place. Amen. Come on. We can do better than that. Well, who is it to you today? Amen. Amen. What, what type of God do you serve right now? Some of us should be on our feet right now because. Listen, you didn't have to do it. When you get in a place of, of worship and, and relationship with God, and you start to realize that, God, you don't have to do it, but because you love me, God. Unconditionally. Can I tell you something about his love? See, his love is unfailing. It's unfailing. Amen. Mr. Coleman, amen. We praise God for you. Amen. Thank God for your strength. Amen. To stand. Amen. I thank God for faith. Amen. I won't be able to submit this nugget to you. Amen. I'm not going to prolong the time, but let me tell you something about Amen. When the when the scripture says that the just shall live by faith, listen. When you begin to live by faith, you begin to speak those things. See, when you start to see your situation, it's no longer if God is going to come through, but it's when you come through. Amen. You do have to be able to Amen. Speak it by faith. Amen. But we're not going to prolong. Amen. We have a special. Amen. Amen. A special surprise today. Amen. amen. That's what I like to call that. Amen. But we do say to amen all of our live viewers. Amen. All of our Kingdom Agenda Fellowship friends that are watching live on Facebook. We say good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Amen. In the impact experience. We pray you have a blessed day. You enjoy. Amen. The word of God. But without further ado. Amen. I want to introduce the song. Amen. A, a, amen. A special. Amen. A, a awesome. A powerful. Amen. Word. Amen. Living word. Walking word. Speaking woman of God. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For who she is. We thank God for what God is doing in her life. Amen. But, but can you please, amen, help me. Amen. Welcome. Amen. Minister. Amen. Miriam Haston. Amen. Can we celebrate amen, what God is doing right now? Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yeah, I got it. Come on. That want to break you. Yeah. 
Jesus. They want to put you in a mode of depression, but All the right. fight, ah, when you put it at his feet, Jesus. I don't have to fight it no more. Yes. I don't have to worry about it. I said, man, you're drunk in the shop. Okay, what else can I do? Jesus. <laughs> but we're here. And we're going to give God all the glory and all the praise. Amen. I'm going to be as long as the Spirit says. Um, Father, let us pray. Father, move me out of the way. Let the atmosphere that you have set in this place remain. Lord, rest on us, breathe on us, lay on us. Let your Holy Spirit fill this atmosphere. Let them not see Mary, but let them see you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. I've been excited for a while now, and it's a, there's a move and a shift in the atmosphere. You may not know what's going on, but your spirit knows what's going on. So I, I get excited about the word. I'm, I'm going to try to stand here. We're probably not going to, but here we are. I'm going to come to you from 1 Corinthians 3. Beginning at the ninth verse. I'm going to read it to you from the King James Version and the New Living Translation. Amen. And it says, For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building according to the grace yes. of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. The New Living Translation says it like this. For we are both God's workers. And you are God's field. You are God's building. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Now, verse 6 of this chapter is the one that that's the most popular verse. We all know it. I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. But in verses 9 through 11, Paul is describing that we are co-laborers in yeah, Christ. Yeah. That we are his building. This topic has been hitting me in so many different ways. I couldn't seem to get away from it. My church back home had vacation Bible school around the topic, and it seemed to be popping up everywhere. So I want to talk about under construction, the blueprint. As the minister said, we are all under construction, and the truth of the matter is we will remain under, this, under construction until we die. Yeah. Nobody has arrived. Nobody has it all together. Yeah. Yeah. It takes some pruning, some building, some tearing down, yeah. Yeah. and some rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Now, when Apostle talks about his family that is in the construction buildings, that's my granddaddy and yeah. my dad. Yeah. So I've seen these construction sites. Yeah. My dad would take me at different times and different stages of the building process, and you can't see the vision for the piece of land. Right. Unless you have the blueprint. Wow. Ah, if you read the message translation for this passion, it actually says the blueprint. We all have individual blueprints. Then there is a blueprint for whatever church you are a member of. And then there is a kingdom blueprint. All of these things are working simultaneously and collectively together. You can't have kingdom without church. And you can't have church without the individuals. The parts of the body. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. This past week on Inspire and Young, Pastor Leslie has been teaching on the month of tables, the month of direction and change. Mm -hmm. Well, what is a blueprint? Wow. But detailed <laughs> directions, the instructions Jesus. for yeah. what you are building. My now, God, if you're driving God. by some land, it's just land to you. Yeah. You wouldn't even know that someone was planning to build on that piece of land because you don't have the plans for what is coming. Jesus. Maybe it had trash on it. Maybe it had trees and shrubs. You may pass back by it and there's a sign that says coming soon. Wow. And it'll indicate telling people what is being planned on being built. Wow. But the people still don't have the blueprint. 
But the sign is to get them excited. Yeah, 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 anticipating yeah, yeah. what's about to be built in that area. Some people still won't get excited, and that's okay. Right. What's being built there, right. not for them. Yeah. In the spiritual realm, people may pass you by. They may not see the value in you because they don't have the blueprint. They can't see the plans, and even when there is an anointing so heavy on you, and there is a big sign that says, coming soon, with whatever kingdom advancement God has placed in your belly, some people still won't get excited, and that's okay. All right. All right. Oh, Jesus. You ain't for them. After a while, you'll see that piece of land being cleared. But nobody sees what happened behind the scenes to get to that point unless you were part of that portion of the building process before the land is cleared. Even before the coming soon sign comes, there had to be some approval. All right. Some licenses had to be acquired, some building permits. Before you could start building, an architect had to be hired. You have to estimate how much time is going to have to be built. Somebody had to count the cost. Had to make a budget. Luke 14 and 28 says, For which of you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first, and count up the cost, whether he has sufficient yeah, to finish right. it. So you have this blueprint. You can roll it up. I told y'all my daddy a, a builder. So you got this blueprint. And it's yours. But you can't build on your own. See, I have some trust issues. So I was holding on to my blueprint with yeah. the vice grip. Mm -hmm. I wasn't telling nobody nothing. You know, it says in the Bible, imitate me as I imitate Christ. But they take that straight out of context because at some point you should develop your own personality when you're imitating somebody. I'm a writer yeah, by heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So copying is not a form of flattery to me. That's just plagiarism. It's illegal. I don't like it. <laughs> it's not the highest form. I, I wasn't going to tempt anybody to take my plans because I wasn't sharing them. I was holding on to them. I said, these are mine. These are my gifts. These are my words. And I'm not going to give it to anybody. I'm going to keep them for myself. Then God started challenging me, asking me who the blueprint really belongs to. All right. He kept asking me why I was hoarding the gifts that weren't even mine, but were setting his kingdom for his kingdom through me. We all are just stewards of what he has given us. So even though I had written the vision, it wasn't until I started showing the blueprint to folks that that the things started really manifesting. I have a friend. Oh, this is possible. I have a friend that I told the vision to. She got on her computer. She structured it better than what I explained it to her and gave it to her. Wow. Because that's her kingdom ability, business structure, and planning. We all know Habakkuk 2 to write the vision and make it plain so those that read it can run. God started placing me in the path of people with the things I needed to build what he desired of me. Let me share this with you. Everybody that's coming with bricks didn't come to throw them at you. They came with the resources to help you build. Wow. They want to build with wow. you, whether it be monetary, information, their skill sets, or connections. They may not be able to do it, but they may know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can. And it's wow. up to us to be discerning in who God is placing in our lives that are coming with the bricks to help us build. Oh my God. That's good. This is my blueprint. This is my vision. But everything isn't crystal clear to me. There are some points I need help even understanding before they are built. I need somebody that has been trained to read them. Can you open that for me? What's the first letter for the foundation? I circled it for you. It's okay. The first letter. Foundation. F1. F1. What's the plumbing? It's the foundation plumbing. 
Yeah. P O one. P O one. So if become come before P, right? Yeah. The foundation is if. The plumbing is P. Yeah. I need somebody that knows they can't follow this line by line. Why? Because you got to put the plumbing down before you put the later foundation. Mm -hmm. So if I give somebody the vision, they don't know how to read. Oh, hey. Jesus. Oh, right. Help us, Lord. <laughs> and they can't understand what it is that I'm saying. Then we're building on the wrong thing. That means I have to test some stuff up. Jesus. So I can put the plumbing down first. Then I can lay the foundation. The foundation. My God. Teach me. My God. We also need somebody that's able to tell the workers what it is that they have to do. I need somebody that can communicate. Why? Because everybody that's on a construction site not going to get the blueprint. It's only certain things that they will be privy to, but they will be there to help in your building process. Now, I can read the blueprint. But just because I can read the blueprint and I know that the plumbing goes down before the foundation, I don't know how to do no plumbing. I don't know how to lay the foundation. I, I don't know how to do none of that. But I can trust God that he's going to send me the right people. What you say? The set people, set place, set time for us to get this construction going. You have to have pastors. That's why he said, I gave you pastors after my own heart that can go with you that may not quite understand what you're, when you're not understanding your walk, you can go to them and they can explain the blueprint yeah. to you. And then they'll be able to guide you to certain people who are more equipped in certain areas than they are. We can't have pastors that want to hoard you for themselves. They got to be able to send you out to even get the expert. If I got something wrong with me, I want to go to an expert for it. If something wrong with my brain, I'm not going to the foot doctor. Right. Don't send me somewhere right. where I can't get the right information. You can't give your vision to everybody. And like I said before, it's discernment. Even some of the people that are helping you build, they can't see the blueprint and don't need to know the whole plan. And you need those people who are willing to work without knowing every single detail. Some people are only there for a certain phase of the building process and then they leave. But they serve their purpose. The people that's pouring the concrete may not be the people that's building the frames. As much as you want mama, daddy, brother, sister, or whoever to be a part of the whole plan, God said they were only supposed to be with you in the process for a season. They're still your family. They're just not part of that process. And at the same time, when someone is coming to you for help with their vision, we have to be wise enough to say, I don't know how to do that. That's not what God is leading me to do in your plan. You'll do more harm than help. And again, you can support them. But trust God for the area of support. It might just be, I'm a cheerleader in your vision, and you're a foreman in mine. Oh, wow. All right. Paul wow. says, wow. Paul says this very thing in verse 10 of our main scripture. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. But let every man take heed how he yeah. buildeth thereupon. Yeah. Be careful how you're building. Here's another area we get in trouble. We get to looking at what somebody else is building. And we want to do what they're doing. Just stand here with me. With the blueprint. Thank you. So I got my blueprint and it's open. And I start building. She has a blueprint, but she ain't open her, so she's looking over here at mine. But the problem comes 
My foundation is only for a two-story house when hers is for a sky rise. You can't build a sky rise on a foundation that was set for a two-story building. And if you would just open up your vision and go to God with what he wants, you can build your sky rise. It's not going to work if you're looking over here. But here's the thing. I can send some people to you. I can send you my architect. I can send you my plumbers. But if we would build on the foundation that we have set, somebody in here got building complexes, apartment complexes, wow. and we're too busy looking at the next person's oh. blueprint that we can't look at our own and say, this is what he gave me to do. And don't get mad if your blueprint is just a two-story house. It's yours. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, man. <laughs> We have to get out of looking and cheating on this test called life. Because guess what? When we get to heaven, he's not going to ask me about you. He's going to ask me how I treated you in the process. No matter how you did me, he wants to know my response. Come on. We're all different, which is why God set the plans, because he knows what we are capable of. This doesn't mean that I can't get help from you. This doesn't mean that you can't get help from me. But let us make sure that we are following God's plan for our life and not somebody else's. We all should have similarities, though. We should have that same rock in our foundation. That cornerstone that the builders rejected. We all should be building a foundation that's rooted in the word. Verse 11 says, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have. Jesus Christ, in his blueprint, God gives specific instructions. Come here, Noah. We run into problems when we try to cut corners. God said, get this kind of wood, but we caught this wood on sale. God said, not him, but her. But you just want to help him out so you let him stay. I wonder what would have happened if Noah had not followed all the instructions he was given. And even though he tried to warn the people, because they didn't heed what he was saying, they weren't allowed in the finished product. Y'all catch that? That's a whole other sermon. I'm going to stay on topic. Um, see, we'll do stuff and we'll beat our chest and say, oh, I'm a child of God. But when we are operating in disobedience, when we halfway follow the instructions, God don't have to honor us. He doesn't have to honor us in our disobedience. It's but for his grace and his mercy that he covers me when I mess up and still blesses me to be a blessing to the people around me. Reread about Peter in Luke 5. How Jesus told him to cast down his nets in ETS. But Peter, in all his boldness, he was a master fisherman. He knew what he was doing, but he said, at your word, I'll cast down a net. N-E-T. One level caused him to do more work because he didn't want to unravel the work that he already did. But Jesus didn't say nothing. He just let him throw that one net over there. He still had to call the people from over here. They got blessed. He got blessed. But guess what? His neck broke. You might lose some stuff in the process. Wow. But don't harbor on the loss because the blessing is far greater than the loss. I recall Apostle posted something about construction sites and I had to go find it. He was working out. He said, construction sites are often messy for a season, but the dwelling produce is well worth the mess in the end. Yeah. Maybe you have never been on a construction site. If you haven't, you've at least driven past one. Or even when they are doing construction on the road. There is stuff everywhere. Yeah. And the traffic is altered because of it. Even though construction is considered an improvement, be running late and get caught in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You mad? Wow. You don't care nothing about what is improving. You can't see the end for your right now situation. Right. Jesus. You are inconvenienced. Wow. 
in that moment, because of the construction that's supposed to be helping, remember that. When people get angry with you while you're under construction. Wow. Wow. They just don't see the value of the end product. Or even if they see it, maybe they were just having a bad day and your construction zone made it a little bit worse for them. It will get messy in this spiritual walk. People will turn up their nose at what you're trying to produce. You will get frustrated. They will get frustrated. People you don't even know will be frustrated at you because of what you're trying to build on what God has told you. Don't give up, though. Pull out the blueprint. That's another lead reason we need to write it down so when, when stuff like that happens, you can pull it out and remind yourself of why you started. Remind yourself of the end result and keep right on building. Remind yourself of what God has said about you because after a while, the mess will turn into something far greater than anyone could imagine. He will trade you beauty for ashes. You will begin to understand why all the planning had to occur on the backside, why the hiccups in the building process had to occur because there will be hiccups. We talked about counting the cost. Well, even with the most skilled and knowledgeable people, some things are underestimated. And if you have to go back to the plans and rethink and recalculate some things, you have to add an addendum to the plans that you already have. Don't throw the plan away. Amen. <laughs> Just recalibrate. Rebuild. It's God's job to complete the work that he started in you. And he will perform it because he is faithful and just. That's what he promised me in his word. Now, I'm not saying we won't have our moments. I'm not saying you won't want to throw in the towel. But I am saying that when you feel like this, remember the promises of God are yes and amen. That he promised you a kingdom inheritance. We just have to be willing vessels and allow ourselves to be emptied out. Yielded and submitted to what God wants to do in and through us. Right. Ephesians 2 and 10. Because I don't think y'all believe me for real. says, for we are his workmanship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Created in Christ Jesus unto yeah. God. For which God hath born, first ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. That tells me I just need to walk in what he has already prepared as mine. Yeah. He's already ordained it to be mine before I was even born. Now sometimes the estimated time to finish the building is pushed back because it decided to rain when you were supposed to pour concrete. Somebody came and stole some of the tools and material you were building with. Don't get discouraged. That's exactly what they supposed to do. The thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. When you run into opposition, know that it is the enemy trying to make you give up on your destiny. He can't take it from you. So he sends so many obstacles, trials, people, places, and things to try and make you forfeit what has already been declared as your truth. Some of us have been saying, I should have been, I should have been there then. I should have been started on this. We will start measuring ourselves by society standards. Measuring productivity by what someone else has completed. And I have this though. That God has a special way with time. Yes. That he will allow the chronos to meet his kairos and will realize that God's timing is perfect. And what you thought you missed, my Bible tells me that he will restore the years that the canker worm stole. Yeah. Luke 14 goes on to say in verse 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. We have to forsake all to gain more than we could ever imagine. The problem is we've forgotten how to count. What do you mean, Hasten? James says, count it all joy. When that six sickness comes, that's joy. When that bill comes that stretches longer than your bank account, 
that's joy. When that betrayal comes from that friend, that sister, that brother, that's joy. We got to learn how to count. I know it hurts, but count it all. Joy. My brother said, at times, when he was on the construction site, you know, they had to go with my dad. They didn't want to go. It was hot. Yeah. They didn't want to be out there. But he said at times he'd take that sledgehammer. Yeah. And he try to hit and miss. Uh. And hit his leg. Oh my or trying to hammer something and he hit his fingers while building. <coughs> he may get hurt. Mm. While in ministry in your personal life and doing his kingdom work, you're sure to encounter some of the sledgehammers that hit you in the shins. Mm. But don't lose sight of the plans. Another reason why you have to write that vision down and make it plain. So not only will your runners run and know what to do, but when you get hurt while under construction, you can look at the blueprint that God has for your life and recall Jeremiah 29 and 11. He knows the plans he has for me. He knows the thoughts that he thinks towards me. And they are good. They are to give you an expected Yeah. Oh now, now, I ask God, well, why wasn't that the key verse? We've been talking about plans. We've been dancing all around this. Why, why, why Jeremiah 29 was the key verse? He said, because Jeremiah reminds you of my plans. I want you to remind my people that we have to work the plans together. That I want them to choose my plans, be present in the building process, and to be careful what they are building. We need to change our expectations to match what God has said. We need to be about our father's business while we are under construction. He has given us the blueprint in his word. We have to tithe. That'll keep the thieves from coming and stealing all your stuff. And then you won't be guilty of robbing God. We have to give an offering, yes. That's in addition to the tithe. Those are tied to the blessings. And don't just think that this is just about money. Your time, talent, and treasure is your tithe and offerings. We have to make fasting a lifestyle. We have to study. We have to treat people the way the example Jesus treated people. We have to bless the ones that curse us. Do good to ones that despitefully use us. He said, be ye holy for I am holy. We must be in relationship with God. We have to spend time with him. We have to pick up our cross daily. We have to love. We have to submit to him. We have to be obedient. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I do know who holds tomorrow. And he has given us exactly what we need to walk out our own salvation. He has equipped us with everything we need to finish the building. When the outside of the building is completed, there is still construction going on on the inside. That's what turned the house into a home. What's on the inside? We have to continue to work on the inner man and allow the Holy Spirit to take up residence in our messy construction on the inside and allow him to clean us up and make us whole. But remember, this is an ongoing process because the outside of the building is still going to need some upkeep too. That's right. That's right. Let some time pass and you don't do nothing to the outside. All right. mm -hmm. sure. Even in your physical body. All right. As I've gotten older, mm -hmm. it's not as easy to get the weight off. <laughs> the process is hard. <laughs> I stay at the gym and I hate it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But I'm willing to do the work. The work that needs to be done to get to where I desire physically, mentally, and spiritually. Your physical body needs that everyday upkeep. Bathing, brushing your teeth, the clothes, and doing hair. There is a process we go through every day before we leave the house. Our spiritual body needs that everyday upkeep as well. Yes. And there is a blueprint for every stage of the process. I'll leave you with this. 
As we follow these plans, these blueprints God has for our lives, for the church, and for his kingdom, it's okay to get help and ask questions. We can't do this alone, and we were never created to do this alone. God has prepared people specifically for your vision who will help you manifest. In this season, be sensitive to the direction and whatever changes God is showing you and let him complete the work in and through you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. That's my cousin. Hallelujah. So for real, that's my cousin. So in real life, that's my cousin. Wow, what a word. What a word. What a word. Where are you on your project? Wow. Let me tell you how pivotal this word is today. I, I know that there are visionaries in this room. I've talked to many of them, but I know that you're working on something. You're working on ministry. You're working on your life. You're working on, on, on your profession. You're doing something. But man, this word today. Yeah. Don't forget the blueprint, man. I thank God for this word. Let's give God just one more hand. So, so that's this. Today, today's altar call is going to be a little different. It's going to be for those who are trying to do something. Trying to be. You've lost direction. Maybe you don't, you're not sure of what God wants you to do again. Maybe you, you, you've gotten discouraged along the way and because your construction site got messy. You've given up. All of us hit those seasons where it gets tough and it gets difficult. Maybe we entered into a relationship that didn't work properly. Maybe we, maybe we, 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 we got the wrong materials. Maybe we, maybe we feel like we're off schedule. We're within those places, those between the straits places. But this, this is the month of table. This is a month where God wants to shift your direction. This is a month where your worship is important. This is a month. As, as Mimi was saying, Malisha was saying in prayer, well, you got to be sensitive to the leading of God. Now, there are some things he's going to lead you away from, and other things he's going to lead you to. He's going to lead some things away from your life, and other things he's going to bring. But as we heard in our exhortation and our word, he's shifting in this atmosphere. He's shifting in this season. And so if you're in a place where you're making some decisions. Maybe there's there's ministry in you and, and you feel a push, but you, you're a little bit fearful, as, as, as Minister Victoria talked about. You're, you're, you're a little bit afraid to activate you. You know it's going to require something of you, but you're looking at you instead of the Christ in you. Because he said, if you stand out, give me the word. If, if you try, he'll, he'll do it, do it, because it's his blueprint anyway. You're only the foreman. You're, as Paul said, you're the wise master builder. So this altar call is for people who feel a need to shift something in their lives. Maybe it's shifting your home. Maybe it's shifting your ministry. It's your time now. I want you to come if there's something that you want to see different in your life. It may be your surroundings. It could be your business. Whatever it is, come Come. You may have ministry in you. You may have ministry in you. And you're, you're afraid to step out on it. You may be looking at something changing you like this is your time. If you have vision, if you have something that you want to do, you know God is pushing you. You feel that nudge. This is your time. Let me start to pray for you as you come. I, I feel it, but I feel a resistance also. So let me, let me just pray for you and, re and release you to come. Father, now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we ask you now, just come, come and feel, just go. 